and stuff these appearances in the country. He's living in Australia. He has previous associations with the NGO complex in this country. The Anglo self brought out the same nobody from Australia, but they also wheeled out an NGO called Durant. They said that these people are coming from war torn countries, and I'd like to challenge that. How do you know what countries they're coming from when they don't even have passports on arrival? 61% of them are arriving in this country with no documents. We know as well that no matter if they have documents or not, that none of them are vetted. I have it. We I circulated a video on our page last week, and I counted that between the fifth of January and the nineteenth of February, there were thirty convictions for rape. Thirty convictions for rape in less than six weeks, and this is why we do not want these illegal immigrants in our community of Hotel. <laughs> Now, this fellow from Doris also wheeled out the tired old, oh, should just the Irish go everywhere in Ireland? Well, for a start, we were being genocided out of our own land. There was plenty of food in Ireland. We, we, weren't, we weren't having a famine here. We were being genocided. Our crops were being stolen from us and our resources being plundered from us. And that, that I'm, I'm so fed up with the famine narrative. None of the Irish who went abroad were handed a single thing. We weren't handed rooms in five-star hotels. We weren't handed social welfare. We were never promised that we were going to be given anything. When the Irish went abroad, they worked hard for every single thing that they got. And they earned the trust and the respect of the countries they went to. And we are universally loved abroad because of the way we conducted ourselves in other countries. And I would counter that the people who are coming here now are vastly different from the Irish people who emigrated over the decades. Which brings me to the Willie O.G. blunder this week. Did everybody see Willie O.G.? Willie O.G. let it slip on national television that the government have been covering up the problem is with mass immigration using the help of the media and others. The NGO complex are the others. The NGO complex seems to be the ones telling our government what to do and how to think, and us along with it. And frankly, we are fed up with this now. The more serious reaction to the protests that have been going on up and down the country is that Simon Harris announced this week that he wants to add migrant status as a yet another protected class for the hate speech legislation that they've been trying to bring in for the last seven years that I know of. So migrant status is yet another protected mm. class. And isn't it funny that every class is protected except for Irish people in our own land? 100%.
And it's not to do with misinformation going up and down on social media. It's to do with us having families and friends in other counties and knowing what's going on. I have friends and family from all over this country. And I know what these direct provision centres have done to towns. And it's time to say no. It's time for us to stand up. So I'm going to end this speech with an appeal to the men of Coot Hill. If you don't stand up now and be the men of your community, your new arrivals will be. So I want you to stand up now and be counted and say your piece. Because you will not be given another opportunity to do it. So with that, I thank you all very much for listening to me. And I know there's a few local people now who want to say a few words. Um, so whoever wants to be first can be first. And thank you again for coming out. Well done. Good speech, sir. I am not a person who supports right wing or is bigoted in any way in my outlook. I am simply a mother and grandmother who is worried for the future of Cahill and its surrounding areas. I speak as someone who has lived for over 50 years near Cushill and has raised my family here, worked and created employment in the area. I have employed from all creeds in my family factory and still welcome exchange students from Faith Aidan's comprehensive of various nationalities in my home. I know the Irish have traveled over all the world and has done well in many countries. Some of my own children have traveled and walked abroad. However, they went to these countries, they went to walk. They left money and contributed to the country they were in. Even in the US, where the Irish have traveled in big numbers, all different periods, at different periods, all over the past 150 years. The Irish were not always welcome with open arms and allowed to enter the country without any restrictions. The famous Ellis Island in New York Harbor was an emigrant, when an, an immigrant processing center from the 1890s to the 1920s, where it was then became a detention center after the Emigration Act of the early 1920s. Even in the early times of mass emigration in New York, people were screened for health, mental ability and fitness to contribute to society. Irish women were especially screened to make sure they could walk and bear children. Yes. <laughs> Families and people from here were detained in Ellis, in Ellis Island and ships in the harbour for months at a time. Before being allowed to enter the US, they had to show means to travel or by purchasing a train ticket, people to travel on and stay with. They also had to show that they had work yes. and they would make a positive contribution contribution to American society. If they were deemed a race, they could, they could come before a hearing committee on Ellis Island where they were deported. If they were of little benefit to the betterment of American society or likely to, to fall foul of the law. Following the Immigration Act of 1924, strict immigration quotes were an were enabled, mm -hmm. and Ellis Island was downgraded from a primary um, inspection centre to an immigrant detention centre, post only those who were detained or deported. Final inspections were there, were now indeed conducted on board ships in New York Harbour. Lots of people from all countries have come to Ireland and made a good, a big contribution to many different aspects of Irish life. From doctors to nurses, which we need badly in the health centres, people work, working in factory shops and the hospitality industry. Those people have integrated into Irish society and live here in normal circumstances. They have measured, they have measured and structured their, their 
advantages of immigration and his wealth. I've only a thought, please. Simply bringing a crowd of people of a known origin, ability, or kind to a small town like Good Hill makes no sense whatsoever. We are struggling to provide enough social outlets for the people young and old who already live in the area. We don't have the capability to have enough housing for people already living and working here. There are very few available staff or houses for rent for people who need them already. There's no planning or structures in place to take a larger number of people in this area. Yes. Those people will not be able to walk. They will have nothing to do with their time 24-7 yeah. except walk around and hang around. Yeah. This proposed house is simply a means for a small number of people to make money from an extraordinary situation without any thought or consideration for the people of Kuhl. Hey. Hey. The men, women and children who have lived here for years and have contributed and, how, and will continue to live in the area for years to come. This is a recipe for disaster and trouble. Yes. This should not be allowed to happen and should be opposed in the strongest possible terms by contacting local politicians. Their first duty should be for the people who have voted them in, yes. not That's the it. masters That's in it. Leicester House who live privileged nearby in Leafy suburbs far removed from the lives of the only people of this town and county they will they don't care they don't know or care about Coot Hill and its people so it look to us to make our concerns be known and let the people making these decisions know that Coot Hill will refuse to simply be used as a dumping ground for people are known very good. Excellent. Good. 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 Day, we'll be standing trying to walk down the town through God knows what. It'll be all 
the cause of this man and this in this in the, and his family in this town. Greed. The, the, greed. It's all greed. Yeah, greed. I mean, but he's contributed. You must remember, he has over the years contributed so much to this town, right? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> so, so you just got to remember that. And what am I going to say? Something? Yes, next week we're going to go two o'clock next week again. Uh, I think there's some confusion over what's going on. Uh, One thirty up at the pig market, and we're going to walk down to the end of the pig market. If there are people here that shouldn't be here, we're going to turn right and head out to Jimmy Brady's house. Yes. It's yes. 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 Thanks very, very much, everybody, for coming out. Um, I know it's a hard thing to, to, to come out and, and uh, you know, an even harder thing to speak. So, but like literally, this woman here is 76 years of age. And I look around and I'm just wondering, where are the men? Where are the men? Because the men of your community are going to be housed in here if you don't stand up and locate your testicles for fifth sake. Press <laughs> <laughs> company accepted, of course. <laughs> so we're going to march back up through the town now. Um, please. Well, okay, we're not going to march up through the town. But uh, this is, uh, please hang around, talk to each other, you know, get each other's numbers, support each other because. We are going to keep on going until we get a commitment that no unvetted, illegal young men of military age are housed anywhere in the town of Coot Hill, not only this building. And that is our mission. Yay. And thank you very much for coming. There, we're here in Coot Hill. There was a good crowd of local people here. Some great speakers. That woman, 77, was a fantastic speaker. Obviously very engaged and very angry about dumping of so many unknown males in Coot Hill. The stats there that have come out in the recent week is that there's been 34 cases of rape and sexual assault listed in the court in the last six weeks. It's a huge number of people. It's 36, sorry, it's 34 cases of rape and sexual assault listed in court, heard in court in the last six weeks in Ireland. Those 34 cases are completely unnecessary. Ireland, there's always bad eggs in every community. Evil runs through the heart of every man and every society. But the difference between our bad eggs that we have in Ireland is that we don't have to take in these unknown people with unknown criminal records into our country. We as a people should have an immigration policy and we as an Irish people should decide who comes in here, who works here and who can reside here and when they have to go home. So that's why we're here. I am here, Herman Kelly, President of the Irish Freedom Party. I'm here to, to support the people of Good Hill in their protest and rally against unvetted immigration. Gora Magasa, Slana Spanak from Good Hill, County Cavan.